Do you practice while standing or do you perform while sitting? <laughs> Today, I take a look at the different playing positions and how they can help or hold us back. Plus, I have something special to say for our regular listeners. So stay tuned to the end. Welcome, friends, to this episode of the Play Guitar Podcast. I'm Lee, and this is the podcast that's determined to make you a better guitar player. No matter if you're just starting out or you've been playing for years, this is the show that will help you become the guitarist that you always wanted to be. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the podcast and check out the description for all of the links from the show. Welcome. This is a place to feel good about yourself as a guitar player. You can feel empowered, that you can get better, and it's a place that makes you think about what you are really doing and whether your efforts are getting the results that they deserve. Today's topic, if, the, <laughs> if there was ever a universal topic that applied to everybody, to all guitar players, this is gonna be the one. Uh, I wanted to share a review with you. This is I'm, I'm doing a few things today that I don't normally do, that I should do, that I'm feeling like, eh, I, I, uh, th- these are things I don't need to just put off to the side. I need to share these on the, the, the show. So uh, this one is a review. This is an Apple podcast review from Aaron. And he said, communication style. He said, look forward to each episode. Lee has the ability to engage beginners to advanced players. The wide variety of topics keeps me motivated to continue learning and practicing each day. The podcast and video combo has also helped me reinforce the experience Lee is sharing. And thank you, Aaron. I sure appreciate that. And this this is um, the reason I shared this. I, I was looking through him today, and this is this kind of went along with what I'm talking about today, is that he appreciates that this is something that beginners through advanced players can get something out of it. I love that. I love that this podcast is different. Uh, Think about it. I'm teaching guitar (laughs) by audio (laughs) and I'm teaching everyone, not just beginners, not just advanced players, not just intermediate players. How does that happen? How am I doing this thing? It's because of I've been I have been in the practice of paying attention I started to notice something. I, I'd have beginner students who were struggling with their technique and they were struggling with how to understand how chords work and struggling with understanding how scales and chords work together. Uh, also struggling with playing things on time, rhythm. And then I'd have a next session and I'd have an advanced player. And in their lesson, guess what we were working on? <laughs> struggling with technique. Understanding how chords work, struggling with understanding how scales and chords work together and struggling with playing things at the right time. Same problems, just at a different stop on the journey or on the path or on the route, however you want to call it. You're never going to stop using the things that you learned in the beginning and they're never going to be finished. You can always play them better. We're on a shared experience here. And when you see someone who's struggling with the guitar, you know about it. You understand. You know it, don't you? You know what they're going through. You felt it before. And it's so much fun to learn a guitar, and but it's such a puzzle at the same time. So today, we're going to pick apart another part of this puzzle for beginners, intermediates, and advanced guitar players. And this is playing position. We all have our own way that we like to practice. It could be sitting in the couch, leaning over to the side on the armrest. It could be any of those things. But but we all have our way that we like to perform too. Standing up, sitting, leaning forward, slumping over the guitar, sitting up straight. Maybe you have your neck over to one side. The guitar strung really, really low. Or the guitar up high. You might have one leg elevated. You might have both feet on the floor. Whatever it is, whatever makes sense for one person doesn't always translate to everybody else. So we're going to take a look at the different issues of sitting or standing while playing. And we're going to give a little light into something important that you might not think about very much. Sitting and playing. 
This is something I do a lot of now, a lot more now than I did back when I was gigging and playing in bars and those things, sitting and playing guitar. We, we've got, a, I've got a few different issues that we deal with that. Uh, we're all going to be sitting and playing guitar. Uh, most of us, that's all we do. We don't really stand up a whole lot. Uh, what are some of the things that go along with that? Well, one is back issues. That's the big one, especially for popular guitar. Most of us have posture issues when we play the guitar. You can be curling over top of the guitar, hunching, or however you, you want to say it, over top of the guitar, and it has an effect on you. It has an effect on your playing, has an effect on your playing angle, your arm angle of the guitar, and it has an effect on your lower back. When you sit in a slouch for long periods of time, it puts strain on your lower back. I know, especially for people on up in age and you've had maybe a few um, back problems over the years. I know I have. I once picked up a box when I was in a hurry that was a little too heavy and I turned before I made it out the door and then my back went out like that. And so I have to be very careful of those things. Um, you can get a, your discs in your back. You're putting strain on them when you're hunched over and, and slumped. So one of the things that uh, I try to remember is to try to sit at a 90 degree angle. My legs out and then my back straight up and down. Uh, it puts less strain on your lower back and you can end up playing longer. I know for me, I'm constantly, if I'm sitting on the couch somewhere where I can't get a good angle to, to sit from, if I'm slumped over, uh, I can't practice that long. Sometimes in situations like that, I'll get a pillow or something behind me to give a little support to my lower back. Uh, to make things a little bit easier so I can sit a little bit longer there. Most of the time, though, I have this stool here that I teach from all the time, and I can't really slump too much on this stool. Uh, a chair, kind of like this this uh, black one that I have over here behind my shoulder, that one I can slump down in all the time. You know, you get tired, you just want to be comfortable, but that com comfort comes with a price, especially when you have a guitar, even a heavy guitar, uh, sitting on your lap or hanging off of your shoulder. Uh, you can also get upper back strain too. Uh, this I get from playing acoustic guitar, a big acoustic guitar, you know, a dreadnought or something like that. Something where you've seen, you've seen it, you've felt it. Uh, you have to kind of reach over top of the guitar and then, and then straight down to get to the strings. And that, if you, if, if you were in playing, playing that guitar, uh, and just imagine that guitar disappeared. What would you look like <laughs> sitting there? What would you look like playing that guitar? It, it would be, diff it, you know, it'd be difficult to keep that pose if the guitar wasn't there. That's why so many people lean on top of the guitar, put all their weight on top of the acoustic guitar. And it doesn't, it, you don't let it ring out. Uh, you don't let the, the, um, the wood vibrate there. So, uh, you know, curling over an acoustic guitar, especially I would get it like right between my shoulder blades uh, leaning over, especially for times, sometimes on one side more than another, sometimes the back of my neck, uh, all of those things from sitting in, in a strange way, and it might feel normal for guitar players, but like I said, move that guitar away. And that's a strange way uh, to play guitar. These things can give you some issues over time, but because you're seated, you'll be able to play longer than maybe if you were standing up. This is kind of a good thing for playing seated is something called the foot rest. You've all seen the classical, we're gonna talk about classical guitar players in a minute too, uh, but they carry around the little the little black <laughs> collapsible foot rest thing. They're all, it's always there. It reduces strain on your back. It gets one of your legs up and then you can rest the guitar on top of it and it cures a lot of problems. I've used this over the years, not with one of those little black stools, but with the bottom of a chair or the, the foot rest on a stool, making sure that I can uh, raise the guitar up, if I, especially if I don't have a strap, right? Raise the guitar up, putting it into position where I can uh, straighten my back out a little bit. It created a really good seated position. It's something that I've gotten used to over the while. So, uh, classical seated position. Okay, let's get into it. So this is something that works. And it works well. And for some reason, I don't do it. <laughs> I don't know why. I just always felt like that's something that classical guitar players do. You notice with a classical guitar player plays, they're kind of sitting towards the front of their seat. 
They're not leaning back. They're not using the backrest. They're, they're sitting flat on the seat and their back is straight up and down. Then you'll see if they're a right-handed player, their left foot will be raised on one of those little stools that we just talk, talked about, right? And then the guitar will be the, you know, the, the, um, the curve at the bottom of the guitar will be on that leg, which is where things differ from people who play rock music in, in popular guitar. You'll see people who play rock music on the right leg. They'll put the guitar on the right leg there. When you switch over to that other leg and you've got that one raised, it is very nice, especially for someone who's got lower back problems. The bottom of the guitar where the strap pin would be, <laughs> probably don't have it on, the, on a, a lot of, uh, classical guitars, uh, is kind of resting on your other leg. It's down lower. When you sit that way, um, all those issues that I have when I'm playing guitar sitting on the couch are gone, right? My back is straight up and down. I'm not putting extra pressure on the disc in my back in, in the lower part there. My arm is at a proper playing angle, right? Uh, it's very easy to fret chords. I can play up high or down low. Uh, it's very nice. It's very nice this way. And I don't do it. <laughs> I guess I'll work through my issues right here with all of you. Sitting and playing guitar doesn't translate to standing. And that was something that was a big issue for me early on because I wanted to be a performing guitar player. I wanted to be able to play well standing. But I noticed the way that I would sit and play, my arm, my elbow, and my wrist angles were all different than when I would stand up to play. So something that I could play easily when I'm seated was a challenge when I was standing up. Also, uh, when I'm inexperienced for standing and playing, when I hadn't, you know, when I just started doing that, not used to standing for three hours at a time playing 30 songs for a bunch of very wonderful people <laughs> in the audience, right? I, 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 when I was inexperienced with that, uh, I would get fatigued. My shoulder would hurt, especially when I was playing early on in high school. I had a very heavy Les Paul that I used to play. And it was it, it was always a challenge to play for more than, say, 20 minutes. And I would start to lean over to one side and my back would hurt a lot. I wasn't used to the weight of the guitar. What are the issues with standing? Well, one, it's mostly how it looks. You got to look cool when you're standing and playing guitar. <laughs> and, the, you know, the, the thing is, the, the the higher the guitar goes, the less cool you look, right? You know, <laughs> and the lower the guitar goes, the, the more cool you look. But the but the more difficult it is to play. It's I've tried it before. I've lowered that strap down and tried to play as low as some of these, you know, even like slash plays so low. And he's playing some very difficult things. I can't do it. Uh, but I'm not used to it. My angle, the angles are all wrong for my playing. It's not comfortable for me to play. It looks comfortable to them. Uh, when you see people who are used to playing down really low, uh, it doesn't, it looks very comfortable, but to me, it's very uncomfortable. I'm not used to it. It's probably because I'm just played differently, uh, the other time. So too high or too low on that strap too high, even though it looks uh, a little more nerdy, uh, it's very comfortable to play that. You can get those elbows out right? <laughs> uh, but it's also hard on the shoulder and the upper back. The, the, the weight of the guitar is, is, is more focused up in that area that I've, when I've noticed when I've done that. Uh, too low, right? Hard on the wrists makes fretting chords very difficult. Uh, for me, I found the happy medium and that took a while. You know, I've played a little bit lower. Uh, I play a little bit higher, especially if I was playing uh, if I was playing like a rock gig, I'd probably play a little lower. If I was playing a jazz gig or like a wedding or something like that, I'd have the guitar up a little bit higher. And eventually I came to the to the spot where I play it all the time right now, which is in the middle. Uh, it's kind of like the guitar and my um my hip my hip bone is right where the the um the strap button would be there. Uh, when I'm standing and also when I'm sitting, which is something I'm going to talk about in a minute. Also, the strap that you use when you're standing is a big issue. Uh, we usually just go in and you get these, what are these, like um, two and a half inch straps that are made out of nylon. They're everywhere. There's 10 millions, uh, 10 million. I'm using one right now. Um, 
how wide your strap is is very important to the comfort of the guitar and how you play. Uh, I've seen some folks who have four inch wide straps made out of leather and very cushiony. Uh, I have one and I used it for a long time, especially when I played acoustic guitar. And sometimes you, you forget the guitar's even on. The wider it is, the more it spreads out the weight of the guitar and the less strain it puts on certain areas of your neck and shoulder area. To me, the thinner the strap is, the heavier the guitar feels. Isn't that interesting? You see some people who use those, it looks like it's like a, a, a thin piece of leather or like a string for the guitar. And wow, that looks so painful to me. It just, it just, I can just feel how painful that would be. But the nylon is cheap. The leather over time, it will crack, but it's usually wider than the nylon. Um, and, and, but you know, for me, maybe I should start doing that because this nylon over time, it's, it's today I'm recording a bunch of podcasts in a row. Uh, and you know, I know by the end of the, the, of the afternoon when I'm done doing this, that my shoulder's going to be sore. I think one of the reasons why I tend to slouch with the guitar and maybe a lot of people too, is the weight of it, right? Uh, you don't want to have all that weight right on your shoulder. You kind of you kind of when you slouch over, it kind of spreads the weight out a little bit. And it also can can lay on your leg, too, uh, if you slouch over long enough. So let's talk about where I landed with this. My compromise, my compromise between being seated and playing and standing and playing deals with the guitar strap that we've been talking about. I always wear a guitar strap when I play. If you've seen me on any of the videos on Instagram, a ton of clips all over Facebook and Instagram right now. Um, I'm always wearing uh, this black strap with my Stratocaster. It's just a habit now. I have one strap for every guitar. I don't pass them around. I make sure that each guitar has a strap. I have different types of straps for different uses. Even though I'm seated right here, the guitar is not resting on my leg. Uh, I am. Uh, this strap is exactly where I need it to be. It is right above my leg. It's it's it, the weight is still on my shoulders, but what ends up happening is, I if I play this way where the strap is hanging, it's a it's like an inch away from being resting on my leg. Um, is that at this position here? If I stand up. And this is for the folks who are watching this on video. If I stand up, it doesn't change. It doesn't change the way I play. My arm angles are all the same, whether I'm standing up or sitting down. It doesn't change anything. So when I will practice something seated, when I will uh, be working on a song or when I'll be working on anything, the technique is going to be the same. So all those hours, I guess, that I've been practicing that song, um, it's going to be exactly the same no matter if I'm standing on a stage or I'm sitting down. And that's by using a guitar strap and keeping the guitar about an inch away from resting on my leg. So it, it's still, still in playing position right there. Is this the lowest, coolest look in the world? No, but for me, it looks good enough and uh, I don't have to change anything no matter how I practice. I'm always in the same position right there. So how can you try this? How can you adjust the length of your strap so that you know, your guitar technique doesn't change when you sit or when you stand up? Uh, I would say practice in front of a camera or a mirror so you can see yourself playing. Most likely it's gonna be your phone, your webcam there, but make sure that you can see the whole guitar where it is, adjust the strap uh, and play a little bit and then stand up a little bit and watch your elbows as you do that. See if they change. If, if you're seated and you're resting on it, and then when you're standing up, you will see the angle, a drastic difference in the angle of your arms and actually your elbow, your, your fretting hand elbow, where that goes, and your th thumb too, as it goes around the side of the guitar. Uh, you raise it up just enough that your te technique doesn't change when standing or sitting, but then lean forward. If you need to rest the guitar on your leg, for me, if I'm if I get tired, 
Right. So if I, if I hold the guitar up like this and, uh, I've been sit- sitting for a while, but you know, the way the guitar is really on my shoulder so that I can do this, uh, say I need a break. It, it's so close to my leg that I can just lean forward a little bit and then they get the weight of the guitar goes off of my shoulders and I've just leaned forward just a little bit. So there's my little tip for trying to practice and play and not have to relearn everything when you start to stand up with the guitar. Uh, I, I thought this was a lot of fun today. It brought back a lot of memories about having to figure this stuff out. Uh, and I'd love to know how you're doing with you. Do you have any issues when you're, especially you acoustic guitar players, when you're seated and playing, do you find yourself resting on the guitar? Are you having back problems? Uh, does the guitar kind of cut into you a little bit, especially if it has sharp corners there? I'd love to know about that. Just head on over to uh, playguitaracademy.com and leave me a message. I'd love to hear about it. Okay, before we go, I would like to talk, me and you, to, to my regular listeners a little bit about something that I really don't talk about very much. And I think this might be a big mistake on my part. Uh, I'm afraid that a lot of the listeners maybe don't know what I have available for them for their problems. Uh, If you've ever wished that you could actually see the results from all the time you put into the guitar, but you still feel like you're stuck, you're stuck in the same old place playing the same old things, Think about it like this. You, you get excited. You're ready to play. You set everything up, turn everything on. You pick up the guitar. And what comes out? It, it Sometimes it even hurts. It's the same old stuff. The same licks over and over. The same sounds. And you have the same problems that you did three months, six months, nine months ago. And you still don't really know what it is that you're doing with the guitar. I had hundreds of players, all of them with this exact same problem. And they would come to me every single day for years for help in my group classes when I was back in Georgia. And I needed at the time a way to take them out of this, out of the a la carte learning rut that they were all in and turn them into musicians. I spent years on this. I was trying out different methods. I was testing, making sure everything worked. I was getting feedback from all of my students. And I I had created something eventually that started working. And it started working over and over again. You know from playing guitar, especially in this day and age, that going in on your own is hit or miss. It's potluck. You might have a good day where you learn something, followed by a few months of spinning your wheels. And I had groups and groups of students who did this. They followed the same system. And like every 12 weeks, I'd put them in front of an audience of 100 people to show off the results of the system that we were using. I wanted to make sure that you know that this system is still available to you and it's still helping players from all over the world, every single day. This is the roadmap that I tell you about, that I've mentioned over and over again, and it's fantastic. So to get ready to talk to you about this, I went back and I went to what some of the people who've been through it, what my students have said about the roadmap. Uh, And someone currently, Marty, he said, I've improved more over the past year following Lee's roadmap than I had in the previous five years. But then I thought, Well, what about somebody who was there when I was building this thing? (laughs) So Ginger, who was one of my first students over there, she said, I have to say that Lee's way of teaching is the one I've gained the most from. He keeps it interesting and teaches a mix of fundamentals along with the things that students want to learn. He's also given me direction and helpful advice for achieving my own musical goals. And I appreciate that his extensive background as a musician allows him to do so. Awesome. (laughs) Thank you, Ginger. I, I got to get back in touch with her. Uh, so, so what is this? What exactly is the roadmap? The roadmap I, I have made from that initial group guitar class, I've made a self-paced series of you can do it in order as a 12-week course. I have nine of them to be exact and more to come. And these courses, these 12-week courses take you step by step from absolute beginner 
all the way to advanced guitar player. And it's available for every single member of the academy. You just find where to get started, you plug yourself in, and you go. I take care of everything else. And I hear from a lot of advanced players that they went back and they started from the beginning just to make sure they didn't miss anything. And it was very helpful for them. This roadmap, it's real. It's a real thing and it changes players' lives and is doing it right now. When you go through this, you start to think differently. When you get used to seeing planned, regular results come to be, the way you feel is different. Your confidence in what you play starts to soar, especially when you know what you're doing. All you have to do is become a member of the Academy. If you're not a member of the Academy right now, you're really missing out on this, especially if you're having problems moving forward. So what I wanted to do, I wanted to bring this up because I feel like I don't mention it enough. So I thought I'd do something special for podcast listeners. This membership is a no brainer. One, you support the show. Number two, you get unlimited access to all of the roadmap courses. Each of those, they're like a hundred dollar course each. You get access to all of them and you get to live this low frustration, common sense, musical lifestyle that you hear about on the podcast every single week. You're going to spend a lot more money on other courses and they're all disjointed and they don't care about getting you to move forward all of the way to advanced. And that they don't care about the problems and the struggles that you're having today on your guitar. You all know what's out there and you all know how much you've spent to date with sometimes barely any results at all. Well, I have something special for you. To become a member for the next 10 days is only going to be $19 a month for podcast listeners for new subscribers. $19 a month. I also have a yearly discount where you can save over 30% of normal price for you. That's $199. But, but think about that. Locking in $19 a month. I'm a guitar player too. I know how much we spend per month on things that look really nice and are very expensive, but they don't actually help us to become better players at all. Have you ever seen someone have worse gear than you, but sounded way better? I have, and it hurts a little bit when you see it, doesn't it? And honestly, you have nothing to lose with this. Trying it out. On everything I have, there is a complete 30-day money-back guarantee. So take a test drive. Meet some cool people in there. Get some real results for your playing for once. And if you don't love it, you'll get your money back. This is no risk. You have no risk at all with this. Plus, you're going to get all of the membership bonuses, access to the audio and video private podcast, the weekly live stream Q&A where we get together. Uh, you can ask me or everyone else in the Academy any question that you have, anything, and get big support from our own private community of players uh, that know what you're going through. And now content is being continually published over and over again. There's new stuff in the Academy every single week to become a member all you have to do is just click the link below it's playguitaracademy.com forward slash membership this is only going to be available for you for 10 days and then it goes away back to the regular 24 dollars a month that means new members have till friday the 8th at 11 59 p.m pacific to lock in the deal and that's it so there you go. I did it. <laughs> I told you about the roadmap. This is available for you. Don't miss this. It's helping people right now. And it's my fault. I don't mention this enough, uh, but it felt good to tell you about it. It's a really a lot of fun and it's available for members. And all you got to do is head over there and take advantage of this lock in this low rate. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody in the Academy. And I'm going to call it. That's a wrap. Thanks for joining me today for the Play Guitar Podcast. Make sure to hit the button below to subscribe to the show. And if you have benefited from this podcast, please leave a favorable Apple Podcast iTunes review. It is the best way to make sure we get this very valuable content to more guitar players around the world. And if more help 
structure and results in your guitar playing sound good to you. What are you waiting for? Join us over at the Academy, lock in that price, and we're going to have a wonderful, wonderful time hanging out, especially in our Q&A sessions every single week. Thanks again, and I will see you on the next episode.